Joe Rogan, the longtime UFC commentator and wildly popular podcaster, came under fire this past weekend after Grammy Award-winning singer India Hari shared a video compilation containing 24 instances in which Rogan used the N-word on the Joe Rogan experience. In response, Rogan called his past use of the racial slur. The most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. Although he attempted to explain the context in which he used the N-word, Rogan didn't make any excuses and apologized. Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States is a big fan of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Trump issued a statement dated February 7 and posted to Twitter on Tuesday by spokeswoman Liz Harrington in which the former US president urges Rogan to not make himself look weak and frightened with apologies. Joe Rogan is an interesting and popular guy, but he's got to stop apologizing to the fake news and radical left maniacs and lunatics. How many ways can you say you're sorry? Joe, just go about what you do so well and don't let them make you look weak and frightened. That's not you and it never will be. Earlier this week, Spotify CEO Daniel X sent a memo to his employees condemning Rogan's use of the N-word but added, I do not believe that silencing Joe is the answer. In 2020 Spotify paid a reported $100 million for exclusive rights to the Joe Rogan experience. Check out the criticism and video compilation that India Ari shared in Joe Rogan's apology. Good morning. I want to clear some things up. First of all, this conversation about Spotify, Joe Rogan, me, is not about Spotify or Joe Rogan. It's about my integrity. It's about being who I am inside, aligning with who I am outside. And it's about my dignity, not allowing anyone to belittle me. I'm not trying to attack anyone. What I'm doing is standing up for myself. That's first of all. And I think what's really interesting is how violently some of these trolls are responding to a person just standing up for themselves. Okay. So I want to address the different contingencies of people on this page, the people who follow me, the people who are on the fence and are wondering what I'm saying and the trolls too. Not that the trolls would get this far, but I'm going to address them too because of my integrity. So number one, the writer Roxanne Gay bought something to light for me that I want to make sure that I express. People who are talking about censorship and censoring of him. Censorship is being at the threat of loss of life or freedom for your words. No one's being censored here. She said, this is not censorship. This is about curation. Curation meaning choosing what you want in a space, choosing the space you want around you. Curation. This is not about censorship. This is about curation. And so Spotify is making a choice about the space they choose to curate. I and other creators are making choices about the space we want to curate, the life we want to curate by choosing spaces we want to be in or not. So using the word censorship is um, not, not appropriate because it's not true. So I don't believe in censorship. No one's being censored here. So there's that. Two. I don't believe in cancel culture. I, what I know is that people garner love or hate based on how they act. And the reason why I don't believe in cancel culture is because no one is universally loved or hated. Joe Rogan can leave Spotify today and someone else will want him. No, you, don't, you can't cancel. You can't actually cancel someone. You can curate a space. So again, this is not about cancel culture. It's about curation. Third, to be very clear, I never called him a racist. What I did in the curation of my space is say, I don't like this here. I don't want to be here. Anyone who saw those videos and decided for themselves if he was racist or not, that's their perception. I think he did well with his apology. I also found some of it disingenuous because everyone on the planet knows that that word is loaded and that that's why most people say the N word when referring to the word. And so you choosing not to say the N word is at best an edgy choice. You can be edgy. You can be a comedian. You can push the envelope, but also you must 
uh, deal with the consequences of the language, thereby curating your own life. If you expect people to just accept it, it's not going to happen. So you're going to have to deal. And that's what is happening now. He has to deal. But he's not being canceled, censored. And I have not called him racist. I'm sure other people have because I see how they see it as racist. What I'm sitting with here is that I think he didn't see it as racist. Why would he be outwardly racist when he's part of the comedy community, which is the greatest comics are black. The current greatest comic in the world is black. Why would he want to outwardly be racist? Whether or not he is in his heart, I don't know. But I don't think he intended to be racist. I think he intended to be edgy. And he knew he was doing it. So that part of it, his apology for me was disingenuous. But I heard him. And what I loved about his apology is when he said, it's not my word to use. Because that's exactly right. It's not his word to use. And I know there is an ongoing conversation especially with people who feel like they are entitled to use the word about, well, they, well, black people say it and they say it in the music. I get that. And I'm not going to explain that to you here because this is not a safe space for that conversation. But whether it's healthy for the black community to use it or not, here we are And what culture is completely healthy. All cultures have their pains and their cultural pain and their heaviness and the things that they do right and the things that they do wrong around race, around women, around children, around sex, around money. All cultures have that. So there's this complicated conversation around race in America, equally as complicated around the word. But it is not a non-black person's word to use anymore. Hmm. Lastly, I want to say what I said first, just to be clear. My conversation is not about Joe Rogan. It is not about Spotify. It is about my integrity and my dignity. And that's all I have to say about it for now. Hello, friends. Um, I'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N-word. It's a video that's made of clips taken out of context of me of 12 years of conversations on my podcast. And it's all smushed together. And it looks fucking horrible, even to me. Now, I know that to most people, there is no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that word, never mind publicly on a podcast. And I agree with that now. I haven't said it in years, but for a long time, when I would bring that word up, like if it would come up in conversation and stay, instead of saying the N word, I would just say the word. I thought as long as it was in context, people would understand what I was doing. Like that context was part of the clip we were talking about Red Fox, how Red Fox said that word on television in the 1970s and how times have changed so much since then. Or about how Richard Pryor used it as one of the titles of one of his albums. Or I was quoting a Lenny Bruce bit or I was quoting a Paul Mooney bit or a, I was talking about how Quentin Tarantino used it repeatedly in Pulp Fiction. Or I was talking about how a Netflix executive ironically used it because he was trying to compare it to another offensive word and he said it out loud and they fired him not calling anybody or just saying the word out loud i was also talking about how there's not another word like it in the entire english language because it's a word where only one group of people is allowed to use it and they can use it in so many different ways like if a white person says that word it's racist and toxic but a black person can use it and it could be a punchline. It could be a term of endearment. It could be lyrics to a rap song. It could be a positive affirmation. It's a very unusual word, but it's not my word to use. I'm well aware of that now, but for years I used it in that manner. I never used it to be racist because I'm not racist. But whenever you're in a situation where you have to say, I'm not racist, 
you fucked up. And I clearly have fucked up. And that's my intention to express myself in this video. To say, there's nothing I can do to take that back. I wish I could. Obviously, that's not possible. I do hope that, if anything, that this can be a teachable moment. Because I never thought it would ever be taken out of context and put in a video like that. And now that it is, holy shit, it looks bad. And it, it's part of also me doing this podcast for thousands of hours, thousands of episodes, over 12 years. I said a lot of fucking stupid shit, which is fine when you're talking about most things, but not when you're talking about race. And there's another clip that I have to address. There's a clip from 11 years ago. I was telling a story on the podcast about how me and my friend Tommy and his girlfriend, we got really high. We were in Philadelphia and we went to go see Planet of the Apes and we didn't know where we were going. We just got dropped off by a cab and we got dropped off in this all black neighborhood. And I was trying to make the story entertaining. And I said, we got out and it was like we were in Africa. It's like we were in Planet of the Apes. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes, but it sure fucking sounded like that. And I immediately afterwards said, that's a racist thing to say. Planet of the Apes wasn't even in Africa. I was just saying there's a lot of black people there. But then I went on to talk about what a positive experience it was and how much fun it was to go to see this movie in a black neighborhood. It wasn't a racist story, but it sounded terrible. And like I said, you can have clunky stories about anything, but not about race. And so I deleted that whole podcast, but obviously somebody made a clip out of it and taken out of context. It looks terrible, but it looks terrible even in context. It's a fucking idiotic thing to say. And I was just trying to be entertaining. I certainly wasn't trying to be racist. And I certainly would never want to offend someone for entertainment with something as stupid as racism. My hope is that, look, I can't go back in time and change what I've said. I wish I could. Obviously, that's not possible. But I do hope that this can be a teachable moment for anybody that doesn't realize how offensive that word can be coming out of a white person's mouth in context or out of context. My sincere and humble apologies. I wish there was more that I could say, but all of this is just me talking from the bottom of my heart. It makes me sick watching that video, but hopefully at least some of you will accept this and understand where I'm coming from. My apologies and much love. My sincere, deepest apologies and much love. Hit the subscribe button and share this video. We'll be uploading several times a week, sharing the latest MMA and fight news with you. Let us know what you think in the comments below.